So today I was talking to a client of mine, his name is Shelby, super cool guy, started a screen printing and apparel printing company, they do screen printing, DTG, and a bunch of other really cool stuff. And like any new printer, he had questions about artwork. Um, all new printers have questions about art, separations, it's just part of the learning curve. So we're talking through some stuff and I said, hey, why don't you go ahead and send me the artwork, I'll take a look at it, I'll film how I separate it, and we'll make a cool video about it. So that's what we're doing. We're taking a real piece of art that's gonna be printed later today, and we're gonna do the separations and show you some tricks. So I just opened up this artwork. It's gonna end up being a left chest design, um, but no matter where this thing's going or what it is, I always check a couple things first. The first thing I look at is the font. Now, as you're opening a piece of artwork, if you don't have that font that is in the art installed, it's gonna tell you to go find that sucker. So um, this is one of them that I needed to go find. So I found it, installed it, we were good to go. Here's a big tip. If you are going to be sending artwork to anyone, always come in and right click anything that is font that has that is a font or text and hit create outlines. Create outlines, gotta learn to talk today, sorry. <laughs> so you hit create outlines and what that's gonna do is make this now an object. So it doesn't matter if I've got the right font or not. So I'm gonna go through and actually select all of the font. I can hold down shift and select anything that is that is font here. And I'm gonna create outlines to all of this. We'll zoom in, we'll make sure, yeah, that all of it is the same. All right, so we should be good to go here. Now again, this is just something that I, I like to make sure and do personally. Um, if you're outsourcing at all, definitely do that. Second thing that I look at is artwork. Now, if we look at our swatches over here, none of the, the pieces of art have what's called a spot color. So we're gonna create those spot colors. We need that to do our separations, okay? Now, I'm gonna click one and we'll see that it's this blue color here, all right? Now, under my swatches tab, I can click this little new swatch button and I'm simply just gonna change that to spot color, all right? Now, if I just did it to this one object, I'd have to go through everything else one by one and do that. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna work smarter, not harder. So when I have this one selected, I'm actually going to click select, and then I want to select same fill color. And it's gonna select everything that's blue, just to be safe, I can come in here and, and make them all green. And even like the small stuff, you'll see that it, it was changed to green. This is a good little test too to make sure it's all the right color or the same color, all right? So Control or Command Z, my favorite keys on a keyboard. Um, going back to this blue here. And now I'm gonna click New Swatch. We're gonna simply just, we can rename this if we want to, like cool, awesome, blue. Name it to Spot Color. Um, and I wanna make sure that is RGB. So this is kind of, part of what I'm looking for. I wanna make sure that all this stuff is in CMYK for screen printing. It's very important, you'll see in a minute. So CMYK, click OK. And now we have this blue color up here that is a spot color. You'll see how the blue color actually changed a little bit. This is for separations. This is not for customer proof or anything. So we don't care if it's the exact tint of blue that we're gonna be printing, all right? We wanna make sure that the rip can can observe what we're actually trying to separate. So it doesn't matter if it's the right perfect shade or not, it just needs to be a spot color. And we wanna make sure that this is CMYK. While we're talking about that, I always wanna double check that the document is CMYK. You see how it's RGB up here. So to change that, I wanna go File, Document Color Mode, and change to CMYK. So that's gonna make sure that everything is in CMYK here. Um, and I'll show you why that's important in just a second. Next thing, let's grab the red. So let's see, it looks like this one I missed, right? So you see how it's a text? So I can quickly right click and create outlines. Now we're good to go. I'm gonna do the same thing, select same fill color and select it, everything minus this guy down here. That's supposed to be the same red, so I'll select it as well. And we're gonna do new swatch, not new swatch group, come on Luke. So there we go, select, same fill color, new swatch, here we go. Awesome sauce red. I like, I like using awesome because screen printing is pretty awesome. There we go. Okay, 
And then let's see, we got red, and then this this color, this white color of the shirt is actually transparent. There's nothing there. So the only thing we got left is going to be this this black here. So it's once again select it, select same, fill color. Seriously, this select same or similar um, is such a helpful little trick. Okay, groovy black. And some people will go in and, and mark these like print so they know which colors they want to print, okay? Um, and I'm going to make that a spot color, okay? So we're good to go. Now, this is where everything matters when we talk about spot colors. I'm going to select Separations Preview. And now I have Overprint Preview highlighted. I'm going to turn off all CMYK. See how this orange one at the bottom is turning off where it says where quality meets the shirt? It means that I don't have it in a spot color. Whoops! All right, so let's get out of this guy. Go back to my swatches here. Let's create one. We're actually just going to select this and make it the red. I must have forgotten or accidentally not selected that guy. Everyone makes mistakes. <laughs> so here we go. Overprint preview. Turn off CMYK. Everything is still there. Now what is the red going to look like when it prints? So we have this red guy here. All right. Um, and then let's look at the blue. This is what the blue layer is going to look like. All right. And then we also have the groovy black. So you can see what each film is going to look like here. All right. Red, blue, black. And I always go through there really quick to make sure that anything that is supposed to print is printing. And if anything looks weird, like when I had CMYK turned off and the wear quality meets the shirt disappeared, I can fix that. So. Now that we're good to go on this guy, next step, I'm happy with the design. I'm happy with the colors. They're, we're prepped. Big tip, select everything. Control or Command G. Okay, you could also right click and group. That's what we're wanting to do, okay? So you'll only see, we click this guy. You can only see ungroup right now because it's all group. Now, why does that matter? Because we're, we're gonna set up our registration marks next. And if I grab something, randomly and I move it if this is not grouped let's ungroup this real quick and I'll grab here at this G oh man that's not centered crap all right so group it group it all so select everything control or command depending on PC or Mac G or right click group all right so next we're going to do the registration marks there's all kinds of different kinds out there um, the simplest one is literally using a plus symbol and uh, but we're gonna make one and I'm gonna show you how we do that here real quick so I'm going to use the pen tool. This is a registration mark that I use quite often. I'm going to just click, and now I can drag this as long as I want. Now I want to make sure that I'm straight. So in Illustrator, it will kind of hold you on that line, but you know my hands get pretty shaky sometimes, and I can be all over the place. So if you hold down Shift, it'll keep it on very specific um, uh, degrees. You know, and straight horizontal is definitely one of them. And I can see how long this is. So if I want to be right at Half an inch, I can use this guy to get me right at half an inch, right? Boom. Okay. Now I'm done, but I still have this little hanger on here. Hit enter, and now we're good. Okay. So I want to make this guy the registration color. So on swatches, we're going to click the one that looks like a bullseye. It says registration if you hover over it. And I'll show you why you want to make sure you can do that here in just a minute. And then I'm going to add a little bit of a stroke to this. All right, um, I usually do like two point stroke. It's gonna thicken it up a little bit there for me. Now this is the another big trick here. Um, we're not gonna be really making this registration mark any bigger or smaller, but if you have outlines or strokes on stuff and you have created them at the size you want your design to be, if you want your design to be 13 inches, go ahead and I want you to when you have a design that has a stroke, select it and go to Object Path Outline Stroke. That will convert this stroke into an actual object. And that means that no matter how big or how small it is, it's going to keep that ratio. Versus if you just leave it and you let's say you have to make it smaller, that two point stroke is going to be two points no matter how small or big the overall object is. It can look really funky and weird. But we're not going to be making any changes here, so I'm just going to keep it as is. And I'm going to click and drag it, and if I hit the Alt button or Option button on a Mac, 
you'll see how my cursor turns into like two cursors. So that's just copy and pasting. And again, holding down shift, I can rotate this to 50 degrees and I can bring these two guys pretty close together. I'll select them and I can go ahead here in the align tool and center them both vertically and horizontally. Now let's make a quick little circle. Take my ellipse tool, hold down shift and it'll make a perfect circle. All right, super awesome. I wanna make the inside of the circle transparent. The outside has a two point um, stroke on it already. And then because I wanna make sure that this is half an inch, I can just go in here 0.5. Oops, excuse me. Make sure that the constraint is selected, 0.5. Right, I'm clicking all over the place here. Now I want to make sure that these are all in the same spot, lined up. We're good to go, right? So I actually like to make this a little bit smaller. So like point, point 0.3. That's kind of what I like. Some people will make these only one point or one and a half point. Um, this seems to work very well for simple stuff. Works out great. Again, if you want to, you can come in here and click path, under path, outline stroke. It's going to create everything into just an actual object. And another little cool tool is under Pathfinder Unite. So now it's literally one object. Super cool, super ops, awesome. All right. Now you see here, I want to make sure that these are all lined up. So what I can do is if I want to make sure that this is uh, the, the registration mark is like an inch above or two inches above, uh, make sure you have your rulers on. You can hit Control R or Command R to turn those on or off. And you can just drag a line here. I'm going to put this line like right at nine inches. I'm going to put another one at eight. And then registration mark goes up there. This guy will go right about here again. We don't need it to be perfect per se. Um, I'm going to now drag this, hit that Alt or Option key. It's that cool little copy paste. All right. And then let's go ahead and move this line down to like 13 ish. Go down to 14. And then we can just drag both of these right to about there. This guy can go right about here. And then now we're going to center these. Pretty cool, right? Now, I can group these all three together. Highly recommend it. Another tip that I like to do is I'm going to look at how wide this thing is. So it's 2.79 inches wide. Now, left chest usually is around 3 to 4 inches. So we'll leave it at 2.7. I'm also going to make one that'll be three inches wide so he can print them both out and just double check what he likes. Um, so if we have this at 2.793, I like to label it left chest or it's width, right? So we could just say 2.9 or 2.8 if we wanted to or 2.7, whatever. Um, we'll do 2.7 inches. Oops. Wide. Okay, and again, make sure that we're using the registration color. Now, what about labeling? Um, most rips will have an option to where it'll print the label for you, but if you want to manually make your own labels, then let's just come in here and we're going to do, we'll be specific, royal blue, and then we can do another one. Uh, Scarlet. Scarlet red, and we'll do another one. Black. And then what I like to do, and again, this is just if I'm manually doing all this, I'll go into each of my spot colors here and select them. So now, and I like to keep everything pretty close here. Some people ask too, like, why do you keep an inch or two inches away from the printable area? I'm going to be putting a piece of tape on this, so I don't want that to affect the printing. So now if I go through, let's zoom in so you guys can see this really well, go through my separations preview, I can see that those registration marks are on everything. 
and also 2.7 inches wide is on everything. Black is showing because we're on the black screen. You'll see black went away. And now all I'm seeing is the royal blue. And now all I'm seeing is the red. So this guy is good to go. All right, so there we go. We are ready to print. Now, if we're using Accurate, we're just going to simply go up here, File, Print. And then we're going to come down here to the Canon Pro in this case. I'll always double check my media size. Do not scale. Now we're using 13 by 19 media here. So if I've got multiple images, I could I could always gang them and print multiple out. Change composite to separation. Big, big important thing. And then now you see my spot colors are all right there. So I select all three of them and it's going to print three separate pieces of film out. A red, a blue, and a black. Now, of course, each one of those is going to be printed with only black ink in this case, but they're going to represent each one of those, and you'll be done. All right, there you go. Simple enough. If you have any questions, feedback, or ideas of things that help in your shop, please let us know. Feel free to post a comment about this as well, too. Always excited to hear feedback and other ideas. You guys have been great. Keep printing. Rock on. We'll see you on the next one.